Wow. Yes. So, right, from uh, from iconic moments on your desk there with, with sure. Kirk. Iconic moments in... In uh, paper. In, in, in black publishing. and white. In black and white. So, I know part of the... So, congratulations, first Thank you off. very much. Yeah. So, what's been the, the reaction? We're talking about the autobiography... Let me hear you say it. The autobiography of James T. Kirk. Right. Edited by David A. Goodman. I'm the editor. I'm only the bystander. I, I took his manuscript, I cleaned it up. Sad he died on the Enterprise B. Uh, but, uh, you know, he tells what a shock story. after surviving uh, yes, everything else. Yes, uh, that, that, it's hard to believe he didn't somehow survive uh, that. It but seems, seems, un seems unbelievable. But, uh, but what led you to this editorship? I mean, I know part of the story. <laughs> um, the, uh, Since you chronicled the 150 I years. Did, I did the Federation book. Federation first 150 years, which you did a very nice video of, uh, and um, uh, Dave Rossi, who I worked mm -hmm. with at Star Trek Enterprise, actually came up with the idea for this book, and he suggested it to the people at CBS Consumer Products, and they liked it, and they asked if I want to write it, and initially I, I wasn't sure. It seemed like autobiography was a tough thing to sort of take on, writing yeah. his voice, and then how do you make it all sort of make sense? There's so many sort of internal conflicts and... Um, well, and a lot of gaps to fill, too. A lot of gaps to fill. <laughs> that, was, that was really the thing that I didn't even really quite realize was... Oh, I would have told you that. Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, <laughs> the Kirk on the farm, I mean, that was probably the hardest thing to write because I wasn't initially interested in that. Like, I'm not interested in seeing the farm in the 23rd century, so how do I make that interesting 23rd as a century agriculture uh, yeah. is not, not important <laughs> I, to you? I mean, I'm not interested in 21st ad, ad century <laughs> agriculture. But, uh, but I did find, I think the thing that I found interesting as I sort of was trying to put, figure out what the book was, was figuring out, you know, that, that we really don't know anything about his parents, mm -hmm. and so I really could, I did really sort of have free reign to create parents for him that would have influenced him in both conscious and unconscious ways. Right. And the thing that I think that I really hit on that I thought was important for him as a character is his uh, no beach to walk on from Naked Time. That here's a guy who obviously very successful in his career but not successful in his personal life. Right. And that whatever we want to believe the fact that he was enjoying jumping into bed with space babes all over the galaxy. The fact was, it, it was pretty clear he was, un, uh, he was unhappy about that, that he yeah. felt wistful for love and a relationship. And that maybe this started, without getting too psychoanalytical, maybe this started at home and that there were conflicts between his mom and dad and, right. and that there was a sense that his, he came from a bit of a broken home, not a toxic place, but a place where it started out perfect and then it wasn't, which is something I think most of us can relate to. Right. Um, right. And so that that was sort of this jumping off point. And once I came up with that, the farm life and all that stuff sort of fell into place about what was going on emotionally for this kid, Kirk, and how my, that might have influenced him. Yeah, because there's a, there's a few chapters there. So did you backfill the growing up years with things specific... Uh, I mean, as you approached it, did you... Because the book itself is the early years, which we right. don't know, which you got to get, Phil, and then Kirk's own take, or your, t your right. the editor's take, right. on all the events that we do know. Right. So, uh, that, which is that, interesting. Right, right. The, the hardest part of the book, to me, was the events that we do know, because they've been, uh, you know, oh, okay. a, a person reading the book probably is pretty familiar with Star right. Trek. I did want to write a book that somebody who didn't know Star Trek well, but it was familiar with it, could read. The the, the one extreme example where I felt somebody who read it, tried to read it and couldn't was my sister, who I gave a copy to, and she, her first question was, okay, so, so who's McCoy? And so I said, all right, so she shouldn't read the book. But Well, and McCoy wrote your foreword. We wrote, McCoy writes the foreword. Very nice of Leonard to do it that. It was. Yeah. Very, very nice. Well, he just lost his good friend.